is hell, but these gadgets and gizmos are the silver lining. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 products invented because of war. Tabasco, Tabasco, the original liquid pepper seasoning. For this list, we're looking at products that were invented, perfected, or popularized in their most common form during wartime because of a conflict, which means we're excluding any weaponry or obvious army equipment. And just to be clear, we're not necessarily saying that these entries were worth the cost that came with them, but we do recognize their universal value to humanity. Blue to the sky, orange to the thigh. Simple, right? But if someone is having a severe allergic reaction, it could save their life. Number 10. Canned food. Of course, all growing things are contained within a protective covering. But it occurred to man that if he could provide a permanent protective covering for the bounty of nature, he could then readily extend the harvest season until every day in the year became a day of plenty. An army may march on its stomach, but with the French military's limited food supply, they weren't marching too far. That changed when the government offered 12,000 francs to anyone who could invent a cheap, efficient way to preserve food. Chef Nicolas Appert answered the challenge with the suggestion of canning. This allowed troops to advance through any season and let the rest of us eat delicious ravioli whenever we please. Thank goodness for Chef Boyardee. Canning has proved to be a dependable and long-lasting food storage method, which is good as the can opener was not patented until 1855. To keep his niblets corn crisper, the giant gives you just as much corn, but almost no water. Then it's vacuum packed. Number 9. Disposable Sanitary Pads Experience the freedom of natural protection, security, comfort. Maxi pads, regular or super absorbencies. In 1914, the Kimberly Clark Company marketed Cellucotton, which, being both cheaper and more absorbent than cotton, became the bandage material of choice during World War I. Soon after, military nurses struck upon the idea of using the material to cope with their own personal monthly battles. Following the war's end, Kimberly Clark opted to formalize the battlefield invention, leading to the introduction of Kotex, or cotton textile, in 1920. The same material also led to the invention of the Kleenex brand of facial tissues in the early 1920s and paved the way for the first modern tampons in the 1930s. Many women have found that Tampax, Tampax Super Plus, gives a super comfort in a super plus protection. Now that's a real plus. Number 8. Synthetic Rubber It's a mighty sobering thought, but if it hadn't been for what you hold in your hand, we might have lost our national neck in World War II. Synthetic rubber? Precisely. Although there had been numerous prior attempts, synthetic rubber as we know it today did not come about until World War II. Developed by Waldo Semen for the B.F. Goodrich Tire Company, the new, less expensive synthetic rubber helped America's war effort, and they needed it. There she was, looking like a donut. <laughs> or a tire. While rubber was high in demand for almost all war machinery, Supplies were limited, as rubber-producing territories were largely held by Axis forces. As scientists tinkered with the chemistry behind the material, they also unintentionally created silly putty, which was not quite as useful. If you pull it so, it'll go forever, like taffy. But if you give it a sharp tug, it'll break like a biscuit. Now, when you make silly putty round and drop it, It'll bounce higher than a rubber ball. Number seven, super glue. The country's gone crazy. Crazy glue in tube or pen. Known now as the go-to glue with the super bond, it took super glue's inventor nine years to figure that out. First discovered by Harry Coover Jr. of the Eastman Kodak Company, the would-be product was intended for use as a plastic for gun sights during World War II. When that didn't work out, it was suggested for use in jet cockpits as a heat-resistant overlay. When that too was rejected, Coover realized the chemical stickiness was best utilized as a glue in 1951. And the product finally hit the commercial market in 1958. Mm, dodge almost anything. A plastic knob, a plastic plug, a rubber boot, a metal brooch, a fishing rod, a cycle grip, model planes and model trains, a doorknob screw, a flashlight case, the broken trim on any car. And now Crazy Glue also comes in a no-drip, no-clog pen. 
Number six, stainless steel. Its greatness lies in glowing furnaces and smoking stacks, in skilled labor, inventive genius, and the spirit of enterprise that is so typical of America. While the actual inventor or nation of origin of this product is up for debate, the discovery of this alloy was announced in 1915, and four years later, a patent for the item was granted to American Elwood Haynes, who had applied for it in 1912. The charge descends through increasing heat until at about 2,000 degrees, the spongy metal absorbs about 3.5% of carbon from the coat. That same year, English metallurgist Harry Brearley also developed a stainless steel at the request of the British military, who wanted a rust-free material for gun manufacturing. Seeing as they were on the same track, the two then opted to join forces and formed the American Stainless Steel Corporation together. In any giant ladle of molten metal, there may be steel that is destined to defeat time and distance, to provide the framework of mighty buildings, and to enter into the daily life of every citizen in thousands of things that provide comfort and convenience with the economy. Number five, walkie-talkies. Here's a space-age gift for kids from Radio Shack. The original Space Patrol walkie-talkie. You get two for just $14.95 a pair, and they really work. English-born Canadian inventor Donald Hings had developed the portable radio for pilots flying to isolated areas of the North and filed a patent for the device shortly before Canada declared war on Germany in 1939. From his position ashore, Joe flashes word to the carrier in code. Beach had established. Infantry and heavy equipment landed in force. Hings was then dispatched to Ottawa to fine-tune the instrument according to military specs and served in that capacity until 1945, eventually earning an Order of the British Empire and the Order of Canada for his efforts. Fellow Canadian Alfred J. Gross also developed two-way radios based on Hing's work, leading to the CB radio, the pager, and the garage door opener. Not both batteries not included. And I've got the danger signal charge. I got your signal, let's go! Number four, the microwave oven. This year is its 65th birthday, and over 90% of homes in America have at least one. I'm talking about the microwave oven, a major time saver in many American kitchens. First developed and marketed as the radar range by American Percy Spencer in 1946, the cooking power of the microwave had been discovered by Spencer late in the war. Working as a radar engineer for the U.S. Department of Defense, the inventor made the discovery accidentally when he noticed his equipment had melted a chocolate bar. But now there's Ward's incredible microwave oven. It'll defrost, simmer, bake. After confirming his theory by making popcorn and cooking an egg, Spencer set out to create what we now know as the microwave oven by harnessing the cooking power of the magnetron and began selling the device commercially in 1947. It's so amazing, I almost feel the urge to cook. I'm sure it'll pass. Number three, GPS. The solar blades snap into place to form an X with the satellite body in the center. While the device we blindly follow to our destinations came years later, the actual technology behind GPS has been used for military purposes for decades. The concept of a global positioning system called Navstar was advanced by the DOD in 1973, as earlier methods were vulnerable to attack. The Navstar Global Positioning System is a space-based network of satellites transmitting precise, jam-resistant radio navigational signals. By the late 80s, U.S. President Ronald Reagan ordered the tech available to citizens, and today, GPS is a standard feature of most smartphones. GPS systems have played a key role since the first Gulf War, which was the first conflict where the tech was widely implemented. They'll never have the freedom that we did, but they can certainly have more freedom so that you feel like you know exactly where they are. Number two, the internet. They're sharing scientific data, arguing philosophy, or passing on cooking tips and gossip, night and day through a computer network called internet. Nope, it wasn't Al Gore. In one form or another, the internet has been in use since the 1960s and is sometimes called a child of the Cold War. Developed by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, to connect distant governmental computer systems, the basic technology was eventually shared with American colleges. And we have been needing for a long time some better way to distribute information than to carry it about. 
The digital domain then expanded in the early 1980s, although it was largely limited to commercial and academic circles. There's a, an interesting kind of restraint that you find. I mean, there's not a lot of cursing or swearing. There's not a lot of um, personal um, cuts. There's not a lot of um, put-downs that one would expect to find. There's not, you know, there's not screenfuls of, you know, go to hell. The internet as we know it finally exploded into everyday life in 1995, when it was commercialized in the US. And without this innovation, you wouldn't be watching this video. It's tapped a yearning to connect, to talk with the world about art, music, sex, guitar construction, conservative politics, grief. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. A safety razor is a shaving device that houses a razor blade in such a way that it greatly reduces the likelihood of irritation or nicks to the skin. What can a picture be? Well, it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be on paper or not. Number one, penicillin. Into the bottles, they pour the liquid medium in which will grow the mold that produces penicillin. Canada triples its output of the magic drug that affects almost miraculous cures. Although the effect of certain molds on bacteria had previously been observed, it wasn't until Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming accidentally and serendipitously discovered that penicillium fungus had antibacterial properties that the benefits were fully understood. The term antibiotic came about in 1942, and penicillin was promptly categorized in this group, as it cured pneumonia, meningitis, scarlet fever, gonorrhea, and much more. Today, this group of drugs treats many bacterial infections that were once considered fatal. And when it was put to use during World War II, it cut the number of deaths from infection by 12 to 15 percent from World War I. Mass production, but all will be needed for soldiers in war. Then from the bottle streams liquid charged with penicillin, the killer of germs. This turned into powder, penicillin ready to be used. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite wartime invention? For more ingenious top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Niblet's brand corn is the giant's own special kind, grown to be sweeter. For the crispest, freshest tasting corn, try Green Giant Niblet's Corn.